Today we're looking at the 2021 Giant Rome Zero Disc. So the Rome Zero is the top of the line of a five Rome lineup in Canada. It starts with a Rome 4, which is about a $639 bike and goes all the way up to this guy here, the Rome Zero at $1389 Canadian. I'm going to show you the specs on this bike, um, mention where some of the upgrades are over the other models, and uh, sizing, weight, all those sorts of things. So to get into it, this top of the line Rome has a Shimano XT Shadow Plus uh, rear derailleur. That Shadow Plus means that we've actually got a clutch on here. This is stuff that's borrowed from mountain bike technology. The clutch is basically something that this is with the clutch off. With the clutch on, we have a really, really pronounced spring here. And the idea there is that you have a lot of tension holding your chain in place. So if you're going over bumps, things like that, you have less likelihood of bouncing a chain right off. We have these giant crosscut 700 by 42 C tires. So they're a tire that's designed to be fast rolling. These do have something interesting going on with them because these are the easy ride tubeless tires in this case. So what that means... So this is Giant's easy ride tubeless system. What it basically means is the tube is actually built in to the tire so this is sort of like halfway between a road racing tubular tire and a regular tire so this can catch some people by surprise if they uh, take their tire off um, or if you do somehow get a flat that you've got something unusual going on you'd still be able to put a standard tire on um, in place of this guy here our cranks that we have going on here are a nice two-piece crank with external bottom bracket. So those cups that you can see outboard there means that we have really high quality bearings and they're going to be further apart than if that was a traditional bearing setup. Our front derailleur is a micro shift front derailleur. A lot of people aren't familiar with micro shift but they are making big moves in the mountain bike world these days because they're uh, basically giving us an option number three for quality drivetrains. We have Shimano hydraulic disc brakes on here. We have some nice narrower bars than if this was a mountain bike. We have a defuse seat post on this. So defuse means that this post is sort of a flatter profile shape on the back and then round on the front and this is a composite version of this post so you definitely will feel um, that post is able to flex to give you a little bit of extra comfort for your bum as you're going over bumpy terrain. Our frame is equipped with the threaded mounts for rack and pannier on the bottom and on the top here. We have internal cable routing and it's done in a really nice clean manner. So we have your brake hose going into the down tube there and then we also have our two shifter cables that go into a nice guided port there. Room for a couple bottle cages. You can start to see like there's some really neat stuff happening with the paint on this bike that is uh, Honestly, quite difficult to get to show with the uh, the camera in an after-hours lighting shop. A two-piece crank set. When we go to the back here, I just want to point out that is an 18 millimeter direct mount kickstand mounting system on there. So that's right below the brake caliper. You see those two threaded holes. Those guys are designed to have a kickstand mounted directly to them, which just makes for a cleaner setup and less chance of damaging paint with a clamp style derailleur. The fork on this guy is a Suntour air fork with a lockout. So this is helping to give us a little bit more 
adjustment over the fork by adjusting the air pressure. That will make up for if you were a heavier or lighter rider. The alloy stanchions shown by this sort of satiny silver finish here. That helps to reduce the weight. And then of course the lockout. That just means that if you find some beautiful smooth pavement somewhere, you'll be able to uh, lock the fork out and get a fully rigid, fully efficient sort of a ride. So for sizing on this guy, 5.4 to 5.7 would be a size small. 5.7 to 5.10 would be a typical medium. 5.10 to 6.1, a typical large. And 6.1 to about 6.4 would be extra large. Um, 1389, weight on this guy is a pretty even 28 pounds. This is all the stuff you get on a $1,389 dual sport hybrid. One thing I do like to note when I talk about dual sport hybrids, um, a pet peeve of mine is hearing that some other stores will sell these as a bike that is good to try mountain biking on and good for city riding. I would say no. If there's a good chance that you're gonna end up trying mountain biking on this bike, I would consider looking at a hardtail mountain bike. It'll be a much more enjoyable experience on mountain bike trails. So unless what your idea of a mountain bike trail is, is something that doesn't have any roots or rocks or loose material or anything, um, please don't buy these type of bikes as a mountain bike, do it all bike. These are fantastic city street and path bikes, uh, getting into doing some gravel while still getting some comfort on that suspension fork um, and a tire that is suited quite well to gravel or to smooth packed dirt. But if you're talking mountain biking in this part of the world, that means roots and rocks and things that these narrow, um, relatively treadless designed, high pressure tires, they're just going to give you a terrible, terrible experience. Another thing to point out on here, these ergonomic grips, I love ergonomic grips, but these do not have a lockout on them. Um, so whenever you see a grip that has this little bit of a wing shape to it, and if it doesn't actually lock onto the handlebars, just be prepared that those grips are going to rotate um, they can't actually hold your palm on that wing um, just counting on the rubber friction on the handlebar. So at some point just know that you'll probably want to upgrade these to a lock-on style ergonomic grip. Other than that, really really nice bicycle. It's light, it's quick, it's efficient. Your seating position will be um, not totally upright but it is designed for city riding. So they're trying to balance putting you in a, the ergonomics of being able to generate some power, which means that your hands and your seat, your handlebar and your seat are at roughly the same sort of height um, when you're pedaling. Um, that is exactly what you want though, to get power to the pedals. You aren't too stretched horizontally because they know that if you're riding in the city, being stretched horizontally and trying to see what's going on around you is not exactly a fun experience, but a neutral seating position, not a comfort bike and not a road bike. This is the 2021 Giant Rome Zero Disc. It's a $1,389 aluminum framed hybrid bike. I'm Graham. This is Bike Bros. We love talking about bikes and helping to put people on the bike that's gonna put the biggest smile on their face. Thanks so much.